Hey guys, Puppy's World here once again, and I just wanted to give you a small update. Just wanted to do this video. Um, we're in the the second bedroom here, and there is for Marantz and Denon receiver owners. There is a firmware update upgrade that is available. Well, started at. 8 o'clock in the morning yesterday. So as of 8 a.m. Friday morning, July, uh, what are we in, the 21st or something? I have to check on the exact date. Um, so Friday, July 21st, 2017, Denon has put, uh, Denon and Morantz, uh, you know, if you don't realize this, they're owned by the same company. Um, Morantz has a little bit more stake in it than Denon does, but Denon kind of bought out Marantz, but they're the same company. So if you own a Denon or Marantz AV receiver, um, it doesn't matter if it's the cheapest one that you bought, the, you know, the, the cheapest line, it doesn't matter if it's a slim line Marantz receiver or a, a flagship SR 7011 or 7010 or a 5010 um, or 5009 or doesn't matter. Um, there is a firmware upgrade update that is available. Um, and I have put a call in to Marantz to figure out exactly, I've actually left a message on their customer service phone number, their main United States contact phone number, and um, trying to get exactly uh, the rundown on their firmware update, what it involved, what it included, and everything. It took about nine minutes total, but um, so I've just set up some things in here really quick, um, just a, a very, very meager... 5.1. We've still got to hide the wires. We've still got to uh, delete some of the furniture here and make it so that these speakers, none of them sit on the floor. Uh, so we're going to mount all of our speakers in this room and we're going to do a very clean setup. Uh, and um, at some point, um, I'm not sure if it'll be in this room, guys, but we'll actually do... Um, I bought all my speaker wire years ago because I lived in a home where I actually ran the speaker wire through the um, wall. So that's why it's all C -wall, or CL3 in-wall rated speaker wire here. So I'm going to do wall things soon, wall jacks and whatnot, where you can just kind of plug speaker wire into two terminals on the wall, and it's all ran with really thick 10-gauge um, speaker wire to the back of the jacks to the jacks here which the receiver goes into but once you have um, and it's obviously imperative that you set your receiver up to the network either Wi-Fi or using a direct um, Ethernet connection cat 5 or cat 6 e cable um, so make sure that your router is going good and by the way this is obviously pertinent to anyone that's got a um, receiver that obviously connects to the internet um, but, you know, I can check on, I'll be checking on which receivers included the update um, entirely. And um, if you have one of these, if you have one of these, an older type of receiver that didn't necessarily connect to the internet, this is my SC05 that I'm configuring some things in this room for. Uh, it's actually going in the my special room soon, guys, that I haven't showed you yet with the SC97 and my clip shoes and whatnot. Yeah, there's the baby sleeping, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, she didn't want to get woken up. But, um, you know, if you've got an older type of receiver like this, look on the back and make sure... Obviously, this won't do Wi-Fi, but it has a LAN 10100 connection. So, uh, you're not necessarily out of the pack if you don't have Wi-Fi or wireless. So I'll try to check with the companies as to uh, what, you know, receivers involved firmware updates and which ones didn't. Um, let me just quickly go for you here. And I have just recently made this little build set up. So I've just connected my receiver to the Wi-Fi network here. Um, and um, it is unfortunate that our slimline receivers from Marantz can't pick up the 5G connection off the router. They can only pick up the one wireless connection, whereas in the other room with the 7010, if I were to go in there, you'd see a 2G and a 5G Wi-Fi connection. Same with the Sony XBR Bravia Triluminous display in there, the 4K display, if you uh, check on the network uh, capabilities of those things, you'll see the 5G and the 2G. This one just has the one. So we want to go in, you know, make sure we're connected to the internet and stuff. Looks like we're good. We're connected and all that. We've got our proxy servers off. We've got our DHCP on and all that. Our IP address is set. 
So we're going to go and see if there is a firmware update for this receiver. Let's check it out see what it says. We're going to hit update right here and it's just going to connect. Well, it's always connected to the internet when this receiver is turned on as long as your settings are correct. But um, it's got to connect to the server real quick, guys. And let's determine if the NR1606, or the Slimline, more or less, receivers from Marantz uh, utilized the firmware update yesterday. So as I was saying, this is concerning July 21st, 2017. This firmware update came out at 8 o'clock as far as I am concerned in the United States. It may have come out uh, midnight uh, for other countries. I'm assuming the United States has the first one. Um, yeah, we're just waiting on our... We've got a pretty slow internet connection here, guys. We've got the maximum, you know, the fastest we can get. It, it is, unfortunately, through Spectrum. I know I hate the company. Most people do, too. Um, but... Unfortunately, it's the fastest one we're going to get here, as opposed to going with AT&T's U-verse. We've had that when I was married. Um, my wife was very fond. Connection failed. Okay, so we're not even getting a proper connection, so we're going to have to diagnose this first and then uh, figure out why we're not getting a connection, then do it over again. So let's, uh, let's determine why we're not getting a connection really quick, guys. Always on. Yeah, diagnose this. Okay, it is telling us that look, our router access is okay and our internet access is okay. So we should be able to see about that firmware. I am confused, guys. We're just going to check our information real quick. Okay, that's what version, and that's what DTS version we have. Um, this one, by the way, this one is essential. These slimline receivers, these were DTS X ready out of the box. So check which DTS version and firmware version you have with either a Marantz or a Denon receiver. These are going to be specific. These numbers are specific to the Marantz's. But these slim lines, um, and I believe including the 1700 slim lines, are DTSX ready out of the box. Uh, so what the DTSX ready, anything ready, and you can even see it there, does say ready out of the box. Let's see if the 7010 has the same image. So the 7010 had the exact same image, DTSX ready. You had to actually go into the firmware, connect this guy to the internet, and then uh, make sure that he had full DTSX. But we're just going to pop this guy on real quick with remote. We're just going to turn him on really quick. We'll keep uh, Emotiva off, and we got to figure out a final resting place. We're going to have to get some AV furniture. I'm really highly partial to the Vulcan audio rack from Audio Advisor and whatnot. Yeah, I know. It just makes it insanely better sound quality. Uh, we'll just check info real quick. Pulse cold modulation we're getting as opposed to Dolby Digital in there, unfortunately. Yeah, I know I've set that up like that though. Uh, but let's go into the setup here. Let's go to general. Let's go to information on this one and compare the two numbers really quickly. Okay, so our version in this room is this, and we're looking specifically at our DTS version here. We've got a 3903500. Let's take a look in the other room then. Okay, so that means we're good. We've got a 3903500 DTS version in both these rooms. That means both these receivers have the DTSX uh, firmware update completed. And our version is going to be a little bit different. If you compare the two, we're ending in a 4093 in here. We've got a completely different set of numbers in here on the SR line. So the flagship models and the SR receivers from Marantz are going to be completely different versions than the slim lines here. Uh, but it is also cool to be able to do that. So to be able to go into your general uh, information of your audio of the receiver and actually just, you know, look at your sound mode, look at your input signal, look at the sample rate, your format, and your offset. Um, Everybody's got a dial norm offset, you know, so all these receivers provide one. You can set it yourself or 
Well, we'll figure out the signal info first on this guy. Yep, 1080 is the resolution coming in at 60 hertz, and he is converting him to 1080p at 24 hertz. Um, so we've got a good conversion. We've got a pixel depth of 8 bits are coming in, and 8 bits are going out. 4x4x4 four by four by four is coming in. 4x4x4 four by four by four is going out in terms of color space. So that is good. Uh, we're just going to look at the monitor really quickly. The interface, obviously, HDMI, high definition multimedia interface, but then, yeah, we got a weird picture on the screen right now that, yeah, okay. 40i P, 1080i at 60 hertz, 720p at 60 hertz, and 1080p at 30 or 60 hertz. So, that's our monitor, that's what we're able to do. We're able to do 60 hertz, 1080p. So we're gonna set this receiver up so we're getting the maximum best picture quality out of him. Zone, uh, we're in our main zone here. We're just looking at stuff, you know, information about our zone and whatnot okay but let's figure out why this isn't working notifications we're not going to get any got our alert notifications on there are no notifications from rants at this time let's figure this out we got to go back to from where And do an update. Yes, I know. Sarge, what is it? What is it, Sarge? What is it, buddy? Come here. What is it? What? Well, go make sure everything's okay. I know you're staring at yourself in the mirror there. Can see my fancy gym shorts on, but um, connecting to the server, blah, blah, blah. I'll be back in a second, guys, when this is done. Okay, so once we just got it connected to the internet properly, um, yes, I was correct. There is about a 12 minute, it estimates it. It, it actually estimated it yesterday at 11 minutes in the other room. Um, but yeah, for the SR and NR slimline receivers of Marantz, I'm going to assume, Dennett, I'll make sure. Um, I'll run over to my buddy's house who's got three Denon receivers. One of them is brand new, um, so it definitely got the high definition copy protection, you know, HDCP 2.2 and all that. So it's going to have one of these as well. This is going to be for video and audio, I'm telling you. I'm positive on this, but um, let's update it. You know, let's just click on included items, and it's going to say the same thing it did in the other room then. It said this update improves overall performance and stability. So they're not telling us anything that really involves with the update, but let's update this and um, see what we get. And yes, we're going to execute it, and after starting the update, note that the graphical user interface will shut down. We're going to do this, guys, and I'll let you know what it did, and then I'll continue the build in this room and continue um, mounting things. And uh, we're going for the cleanest possible minimalistic look in this room with, um, you know, hiding all of our equipment as much as possible. No, the cable box will definitely not be sitting on top of the receiver like that. Um, so, as I've said before, it, you know, constantly in my videos, I'm, I'm, I'm mounting components on, stacking components on other components that have heat dissipation on the top. Never ever do that. Anything that's got heat sinks inside of it needs to breathe, obviously, so um, don't do that. But yeah, I'll let you know how long this took, and then we'll have a, a listen here at what it exactly did. And um, like I said, I'll try to contact Marantz, the company, directly, or and or Denon, and find out um, either which, it's not really important to me which receivers included the update. I'm going to assume that anything with a Wi-Fi or wireless connection involves an update. But guys, if you've just got a receiver that's got an Ethernet capability port on the back, uh, and you know, an RJ45, I believe, not a 34, that's a phone port, uh, RJ45, I believe, um, try hooking up a network cable, an Ethernet cable to it, uh, connect that to your router or wall jack, and see if you can connect the internet and determine if there's an update. Um, by the way, these firmware updates for these receivers actually really do make quite a bit of a difference. Um, the first one I ended up doing on this receiver changed it entirely. Um, it brought DTSX quality to the mix, you know, you know DTSX decoding to it. Um, so this is all software, guys. Um, these newer receivers can be done pretty, can be diagnosed pretty well 
like this over the internet and you can have um, notifications turned on um, and what that means is the receiver is actually sending constant data usage to Marantz. Uh, no, they're, they're not monitoring like how long you're listening to audio or watching TV or movies. You know, they're not determining that. It's more or less um, determining, uh, you yeah, know, they've got demographics too, you know, who's using the receivers for how long, where. I'm sure they are, but more or less um, who's having problems with them who's having things, um, error messages show up to them, why, what's caught, you know, and um, if it's a simple polarity issue or you got a short somewhere. So they're, they're cross-talking between the company and your receiver all the time if you've got those um, notifications turned on. And, and um, yeah, it actually talks to Marantz and lets the company know what's going on with your receiver all the time if something's not working. And um, I've actually... About two years ago, I was with a buddy over at his house, and he switches on his Marantz receiver. It wasn't anything like this. It was an older, non-wireless one. But he switches on his Marantz receiver, and bam, a pop. Uh, so it must have been a capacitor, a cap in there. must have shorted out or something, or popped, literally. Um, and within probably 48 hours, uh, his phone just rings, and it's Marantz on the phone. And uh, he was wondering, how the hell is that possible? Well, when I wasn't looking, he put on a call with them. But that is possible with the wireless ones that do the notifications to Marantz. Uh, you have a problem with your receiver. 48 hours later, they claim to be uh, you know, attempting to contact you somehow with whatever phone number you have registered, your serial number and model number with Marantz. By the way, guys, I've always suggested and recommended this, and I'm, I'm, I'm just blabbering on because I'm trying to illustrate how long this is actually taking. Yes, that is a countdown, and yes, it is pretty accurate, um, depending on your internet connection. So that's why I'm blabbering on now. But um, always register your devices with the manufacturer. Always go on the internet, and you know, if you just bought a receiver, guys, that's a $1,000, $2,000 investment damn well better register your serial numbers and um if you're you know if you're renting in an apartment or a home or a flat or something make sure you've got renter's insurance and obviously homeowner's insurance um you know i utilize um the company that my family has used for the last you know 35 years however what i do is i get specific down to the serial numbers model numbers pictures videos i tell my insurance company to be constantly looking at my youtube channel so they're aware of any new equipment I've purchased or acquired or acquired. Um, so yeah, that's moving pretty quick too. That APLD is just flying. So this is getting done pretty quick, guys. I am assuming it is going to take a full nine minutes or eight minutes from here. But um, yeah, register your equipment, register your electronics with the damn manufacturer, please. That way, if anything's stolen or actually gets broken, I'm not kidding you. I've actually heard of a situation where a buddy of mine had somebody over at a party once. They spilled a drink on into one of his stereos. And a week later, he had gotten a check for a little bit over what the cost of the stereo was to replace it. So, And to be quite honest with you, in that situation, the stereo wasn't actually completely broken. He just had to replace um, a transistor in there that had burnt out, you know, it shorted out. You know, when you spill a drink into a stereo like this, most likely it's going to go to the to the bare metal spots and then kind of short those out uh, as soon as possible, you know. Adding a conductive material like water in there is going to do that uh, very fast. So he was able to replace a transistor in there. Um, he added a different power supply, turned that thing back on, and bam, he was working good. It almost cleaned the inside of the stereo out for him, and he got a check in the mail for like 700 bucks. So this was back in the day we were talking a non-pioneer elite stereo. I can't remember the exact model, but whatever. That's what happened. So renter's insurance, homeowner's insurance, it's not that expensive, guys. Get it. Take pictures of your stuff. Let your insurance company know what you've got. That way, if it's stolen, damaged, um, hurt in any way, breaks even. I'm not kidding you. If it breaks, um, you can make a claim with your insurance company to replace it. You know, if you've got an expensive 4K TV you just bought, put that thing on the insurance, guys. Get the serial number and model number and insure that. And if something does go wrong, that I obviously don't suggest lying ever or being untruthful, but call them up and say, I've got a problem and something's not working. Am I able to make a claim? And they'll tell you you're always able to make a claim. It's up to you. But how much do you want your insurance rates to go up or your premium, you know, so... That's where it comes into play. Uh, let me just quickly show you what I'm going to be using in here, guys, while we're waiting for this. So as I said, I've got to install um, 
all those speakers mount all of those. So we're in my little my little box here of stuff, and um, we're going to be using the sound path pivoting wall ceiling bracket. So yeah, we'll go from there, and let's see if this update's done, and I'll let you know what it included. Then be sure to look out for a list of receivers, models, and all that, and I'll try to figure out exactly what that firmware update involved. So to be quite honest with you guys, I can actually hear the receiver clicking and ticking as it's doing this. The EIMG download is taking probably the longest. Uh, but I can actually hear him clicking and ticking as it's updating. So it's doing something in there. Just want to have you take a look at the back of this really quickly. Like I said, I'm going for a clean, minimalistic setup. So we're going to obviously be taking, and I can do a video on this, guys, as I've had her shoot me installing some of this stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be using all new wiring and everything, all brand new cables for this. Um, everything's going to start from scratch, brand new. And like I said, I'm going for the most basic, cheapest possible Dolby Atmos DTSX object-based surround sound set up in a bedroom here and hiding most of the equipment Um so I've even, I've even thought about um, putting this guy over by my side of the bed, over there. But it would just be too difficult and too, um, it just wouldn't make sense with the HDMI wiring to the display. Then, if we were going with a projector, that'd be no problem. Um, but lucky for us, we are going to be going with a projector at some point. Um, and then, you know, it'll be projecting it on the ceiling. But we've got an issue with that fan, so we're replacing that ceiling fan at some point here with a Hunter Douglas. And we'll move from there. So I'm just uh, I'm rambling on, guys, just waiting for this guy to be done. And then we'll try to figure out what he involved. But yeah, so as of July 21st, 2017, Marantz and Denon, yes. Um, I haven't, you know, actually seen the Denon upgrade myself but I'm 100% positive they have utilized one, so. Check online, guys. I've tried to do some research on this as much as possible. Obviously, I've typed in on YouTube, Marantz Denon firmware update, and obviously nothing in the last month or year has been posted on any of them, so. Looks like I'm the only one that's posting a video, woohoo, on Marantz and Denon firmware updates. It's gonna get just got a million views in the first day, huh? Yeah, probably the most exciting video you guys have ever seen, man. Yeah, no. So, just a little informative video for you guys. Though anybody that's got a Marantz or a Denon receiver, check your capability. Check your capability to get an internet connection, and then figure out if it's got a firmware update for it. Um, but you know, to keep things as proprietary and simple as we possibly can, everything like this, streaming boxes, set-top boxes, and all that, obviously are going to be feeding directly on in with the shortest possible HDMI cables we can get. Um, so I'm not going to bug this guy up with AudioQuest. We're going to keep all AudioQuest stuff out of this room if we can. Um, because we're going to go cheap and minimalistic. And, well, unfortunately, AudioQuest isn't cheap. And it's not really minimalistic. It's maximum. <laughs> it's maxing out your dollar per um, value, you know, what you get. So it looks like the updating is complete here. We're just going to wait until this thing is ready for it to turn on and we're gonna pop him on quick yep now he's ready and it looks like he just turns on by himself here and we're gonna see what this guy involved we're gonna compare our numbers real quick um, and make sure we've got the correct DTSS or DTSX versions once again let's check our info okay you know, this is unique, guys. I wish I could say this was the case in the other room, but we're getting a full 5.1 with a low-frequency effect signal in here and all that. Um, so that's good. That's what I wanted to make sure we're getting. Um, since we're, you know, going to be mainly utilizing the low-frequency effect, it, the subwoofer is going to be over by my corner of the bed. Um, so I'm going to hear the most bass. That's good. Um, if you guys don't know how bass travels learn, bass travels in a really weird way other than audio. Um, the further you are away from bass, almost the more you hear it. And the same with low frequencies. The, you know, the lower the frequency, it's almost the further you are away from it, the more it appears uh, to you. So 
with the bass, um, you don't always necessarily want the subwoofer as close to you as possible to be able to hear it the most. Um, it's almost the opposite of that. You want almost the furthest away for you to be able to notice the lowest effects here. So let me just go in really quickly though to the setup and make sure we've got a good um, number here. Okay, and we are good to go. We are very, very good to go, guys. So they have changed our version of firmware, and they've kept our DTS version the same. So we're good. We've got DTSX. We've got our Dolby Atmos here, and I'll find out. I'll have an update for you guys as exactly what this firmware update involved. Thanks for watching. You can check back in soon. Shortly in the next week or so, I'll have all these wires hidden. I'll have the full 5.1 setup. I'll have all these mounted and stuff, and we'll see how clean this looks. Obviously, it won't be sitting there like that. Um, but yeah, it really took out the bass out of this room. This is exactly what I wanted. This TV has a very distorted sound, especially with the bass, and there's no way to really turn that down on the TV speakers. So we're lucky we were able to go into, you know, just with the hit of a button here, I'm going to back out of this really quick and just show you guys what's nice about Marat's receivers. I know I'm blabbering on, but you can just go option, can hit your tone, and yeah, I keep all the bass down and the treble up in this room so I'm not bothering the hell out of my neighbors. And uh, yeah, it looks perfect in here. It looks great. And one of the best things about the Marantz remotes is, bam, just hit the power and all of it goes off like that. So thanks for watching guys i'll try to have updates for you and uh yeah i'll be back shortly with some more fun stuff and we got reviews to do on new equipment so take care and please subscribe